Hello, thank you for taking out the time. This video is on the nakshatra of Adra. Adra falls entirely in the sign of Gemini and it's ruled by Lord Rudra, who we popularly know as Lord Shiva. I'm going to be sharing the mythology linked to him first and then describe to you how different planets behave in Adra. Lord Rudra is the Lord of Destruction. Rudra translates to the one who roars. We know life to be full of cycles. The world also moves in cycles. He's responsible for destroying the creation so a new cycle can begin. Naturally, such responsibility demands destruction, pain, suffering, devastation, death, bloodshed. All such things are naturally linked to the Nakshatra Fadra. Lord Rudra is known to be the mightiest of the mighty. He's even feared by the gods. He's known to put an end to all things evil in the society. Perhaps we cannot imagine in our state as human beings, how can destruction be important or why is it important or what is the meaning of destruction? Everything has a silver lining. Every cloud has a silver lining. Even COVID led to some good initiatives. I think a lot of us started thinking of life differently. So destruction is important for evolution. We must understand that. So all natural disasters that we experience, we hear about, are directly linked to Adra, such as cyclones, earthquakes, wildfires, very common. Yesterday itself, I was watching the news on how wildfire in Canada is changing living conditions in major cities on that coast in US. Pandemics are also in my view linked to Adra and even wars. There are no winners in a war. There's only death, destruction, devastation, people's lives disrupted. That is the outcome of every war. Perhaps there's something good in that too. And so I'd link all such natural or man-made disasters to Adra. What really happens after these disasters? The whole place is devastated and that somehow creates new ground for new growth, new civilization. Like we hear stories of a civilization which was flourishing many thousands of years ago in a particular place. Now that civilization is no longer there. After it was destroyed by a natural disaster, a new civilization started. So life moves in cycles. Our personal life and our lives collectively as civilizations, they move in cycles. The destructive aspect of such cycles is linked to Adra. Now when you think of natural disasters, Think of the time during COVID. We hear stories of pain, suffering, separation, devastation on multiple planes. People's livelihoods were affected. They lost their loved ones. Pain, suffering is directly linked to Adra. And now if we hear the story of the most recent war, we hear stories of bloodshed, torture, again, pain, suffering, crying, devastation, cities demolished. All of this is linked to Adra. Therefore, places which witness such brutality, such pain and suffering are also directly linked to Adra, such as slaughterhouses. We forget it's not human suffering alone the suffering of every living being can be linked to Adra. 
Animals are also going through a cycle, perhaps evolving into a higher being. But for that to happen, they have to give up their bodies and that happens in a slaughterhouse. During wars, we hear stories of soldiers getting wounded badly. So war hospitals are linked to Adra, morgues where dead bodies are kept. So if a person has a strong Adra's influence on one's career related houses, the person may find oneself working in such places. And lastly, demolished buildings and civilizations. The demolished buildings themselves don't represent the Nakshat of Adra. This symbolize the destruction. It should be clear to you that I'm referring to the destruction and the devastation associated with Adra and not what's happening afterwards. And later in the videos on Akshatra, when I'll be talking about the Nakshatra of Mula, we'll talk about such abandoned places, what happens to them, who is the mother of such abandoned places. With Adra, it's the destruction process. You are caught in the middle of a natural disaster. That is Adra. And therefore, a teardrop is considered to be the main symbol of this nakshatra. When we find ourselves in a tsunami, our family members, it's a time for them to suffer. They're constantly worrying, some are crying. We ourselves may find having no food or water. We also find ourselves crying at our circumstances. A teardrop, once again, is the main symbol of this nakshatra. Now, so far I've listed a few examples which were natural in nature, some of them man-made, and they were more universal affecting large number of people. But certain events can also be personal. A person having a strong Adra's influence in one's life can go through life-altering circumstances. A tragic accident, a loss of a family member, separation from marriage, loss in reputation, all such events where we feel we have been destroyed by our circumstances. We feel devastated. Such circumstances are also linked to Adra. Adra, therefore, is an akshatra where a person gets to evolve. Every such challenge is very painful whilst we are going through it. But the wise person knows that this is a lesson that has to be learned. And I'd like to give you an example of Princess Diana, who had a life-altering event in the year 1992 when she decided to move away from marriage. She and her partner decided to separate. At that time, she was going through Sun's Antadasha. Sun in her chart is ruling the 10th house. The 10th house has to do with one's public image. And Sun I find to be in the 8th house. And more importantly, it's in the Nakshat of Adra. I see during Sun's Antadasha, she was likely to go through a life altering event, which would have an impact on her public image. So Adra can also lead to life altering events at a personal level. That is why I've chosen her example to explain to you. It's not only about natural disasters. It can also happen at a personal level. Now let's go back to Lord Drudra. He roams freely in the forest. He lives with the wildlife and he takes care of them. That is how his life has been described. We hear stories of him having a snake around his neck. All wildlife animals rely on him for his protection. So this gives us an idea of who the Adra native can be. The person can be someone very fond of travel and may also have this desire for freedom and exploration, very importantly. 
Earlier in one of the videos, I had taken the example of Barack Obama and I had mentioned this about him. His chart has Adra's influence and he has been an activist for wildlife protection. Now, this exploration linked to Lord Rudra is also likely to be on a mental plane, not only on the physical plane. We must keep in view this nakshatra falls in the sign of Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury, which represents our intellect. And that exploration on a mental plane can lead to a career in research. I have, in my experience of reading charts, met people who are researchers and have a strong arduous influence on their charts. I have a great example to share with you, which I'd share right at the end, but let's cover all aspects of this exploration. This exploration can also be with the use of wildlife plants and the use of their medicinal quality. So the person can be an expert in herbs therapy, for example, or in medical treatments that require killing of cancerous cells taken the example of chemotherapy in this illustration. In chemotherapy, the medicine is killing cancerous cells and killing is directly linked to Arta given the context I have shared with you. And lastly, this exploration can lead to an interest in all natural disasters, all scientists who have a career in studying the root cause of different disasters and in a profession where they predict when certain natural disasters might strike us. I'd also associate thunderstorms to Adra. The roar that Lord Rudra is known for, to some extent, I believe is behind that thunderstorm. So I have seen electrical engineers having a strong Adra's influence on their charts. The person can also be a student of geography, geology, can also be linked to studying different languages. I have met a person who had Mercury in arts and she was a student of multiple languages. This nakshatra possesses the power of perseverance. I have given you many examples of the natives inclination towards exploration, whether on a physical or a mental plane, the native would also have the capability to accomplish one's mission, conclude one's exploration, achieve its purpose. Yatana Shakti, the power of perseverance, and that would also be seen in the native's way of doing things. Now I'd like to share two great examples Jonas Salk, who's known to be behind the discovery of the polio vaccine, he has Saturn in Adra. Saturn is known for research. Adra belongs to explorers and researchers. Very importantly, Adra's planetary ruler is Rahu, and Rahu in his chart is in Shatabisha, and Shatabisha is directly linked to medical research. So what kind of research can be ascertained if you study the Nakshatra's planetary ruler? The other example is of Nikola Tesla. He also has Saturn in Adra. And in his case, I find Rahu, Adra's planetary ruler in Rivati. Saturn Adra belongs to a researcher. Rahu Rivati belongs to research which is futuristic and is likely to lead the society, guide the society on a path never travelled before. In some ways you can consider Nikola Tesla to be the father of electricity. So Rahu's position can determine what kind of research the other planets naturally play a role. The point I'm trying to make here is Adra's link to researchers. And you'd not be surprised that this nakshatra belongs to the caste of a butcher. 
Rucha here is simply symbolic of this nakshatra's ability to break things into pieces, information into pieces, and look at things closely. That is what an explorer does. You break down your project and then you look at small elements and then you find the root cause. Researchers are directly seen from Adra and it won't be any surprise to you that this nakshatra belongs to the nature of Tikshana which translates to sharp and pointed. Why is that? During natural disasters we see bodies being injured. During wars we see weapons being used. In a war hospital we see surgical instruments being used on human body. All of them now explains this classification. This nakshatra belongs to the guna of tamasic which translates to darkness. So there are two reasons for it. The first and the more obvious one is that all destructive forces do have an impact on other aspects of our life too. For example, if there's a war going on, war is going to have a very adverse effect on the environment. And secondly, this nakshatra is ruled by Rahu. Rahu is the planetary ruler. So the person in pursuit of a project, a person on one's path of exploration, can take steps which are destroying certain aspects of their lives. Like a person says, I'm going to the forest and I'm going to spend my time in thinking about the purpose of life. So in doing so, the person leaves behind one's family. So it's a case where you start doing one thing in a very pinpointed, focused manner, but you end up giving up on a certain aspect of your life. So you might feel what you are doing demands this sacrifice and it's good for you, but with the passage of time you may realize that I have deluded myself to some extent. Rahu creates the cloud of delusion. We feel we are doing this as that is my purpose. But then with the passage of time, we realize, oh, I shouldn't have gone to the extreme. Think a person can go to the extreme in pursuit of one's explorations. That's my view. And that's why I believe this nakshatra has this classification. And lastly, this nakshatra has the temperament belonging to a human force, Manusha. So the native is likely to be driven by one's goals and the person is going to keep marching on like a soldier going to a battlefield thinking that's the purpose and that war, once that's fought and won, there's going to be peace all around. So the person feels driven by that the person at the same time leaves behind one's hometown, one's family and keeps marching on. Like human beings today are caught up in the idea of surviving the cost of living crisis, wars going on somewhere, there's wildfires elsewhere, there's survival. So very human-like, marching on, that is how this nakshatra is classified. Now I'm going to share a very interesting story linked to Lord Rudra, Lord Shiva. There was a time when the gods and the demons got together to churn the ocean in search for nectar of immortality. So there were the gods on one side and there were the demons on the other. They used a mountain and they used Lord Vasuki's body as shown in this illustration to churn the ocean. In the process Whilst they were churning the ocean, they discovered a very deadly poison which could have destroyed the entire creation. Having seen this, they couldn't find a solution. And at that stage, Lord Shiva, Lord Rudra came forward and swallowed 
in that deadly poison and held it in his neck to save the creation from destruction. This is a very important story which explains to us the self-sacrificing nature of Lord Rudra and to some extent of the Adra native. The person might go to the extreme. I don't care if I give up my life, if my family is protected. And that self-sacrificing nature is strongly linked to this nakshatra. Right, so if you have Adra as you're rising, you'd naturally be very inclined to explore the world, whether on a physical plane or on a mental plane. You'd be a social person. You might converse with people in a way which others might find as very straightforward, very pinpointed, very purposeful, and you are likely to have a self-sacrificing nature. It would be important to see where Rahu is placed and where Mercury is placed, which is ruling the sign of Gemini, where Adra falls in. And in addition to this, you must also see the sign your rising falls in the D9 chart. Now, Adra is going to fall either in Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius or Pisces. In Sagittarius, the person's inclination to explore would be much stronger and well-guided. The person might feel, oh, I'm going to this country to learn about that. I'm exploring that science. I'm learning that new language. When the sign is Capricorn, the exploration is likely to be more long-term. The native might have the personality to take on a big project, a big exploration project requiring many years. The person is going to be more disciplined and organized. With Aquarius, the person's exploration goals are likely to be very lofty perhaps even unrealistic, very futuristic. People might see the native as an inventor with creative, innovative ideas. And with Pisces, the person can explore more on a spiritual plane or on a philosophical plane. With all these positions, one thing is going to be common and that would be the native's ability to conclude one's ambitions in life. This nakshatra has the yatna shakti which I had explained to you earlier. The person might go through life-altering circumstances which shape the person's personality and the person is likely to have an eccentric personality. Others would say how you do things and how you are as a human being. There's something foreign like the way you talk the way you think is uncommon. That is likely to be your personality if you have Adra as your rising. Right, if Moon is in Adra, the person's way of thinking is uncommon. You are likely to be an explorer, a researcher. Your ideas and your thinking and expression of emotions are likely to be seen as very pinpointed and straightforward. So others might feel that you shouldn't have said this so directly to this person. That would have hurt the other person. Like you see something wrong, a person has, let's say, thrown garbage at a common area in your compound. You go up to the person directly and say it. So you express your emotions straightforwardly, directly. You are going to be very expressive with how you think, how you feel. And it's less likely to be diplomatic. That's the point I'm making. You're a research-minded person. You may naturally be drawn to learning more about natural disasters, wildlife, languages and you may also quickly decide that, okay, I'll sacrifice myself for such a cause. 
not I'll volunteer. If you need a volunteer, there's an experiment, I'm ready. So the person may decide without thinking thoroughly about the consequences. Very human-like, the expressions are going to be very transparent. If you're angry, people would see it. And the person can delude oneself into thinking, I am doing the right thing, but then later realize, no, I hadn't thought about the consequences. The person can be a caretaker of wildlife. And lastly, you'll always be very curious to learn. You'll always have penetrating questions like how is global warming linked to wildfires or how do plants and trees get their nutrients from the soil or how is that language more effective than other languages. So you look at things more deeply and this curiosity would be part of your character. That's my view of Moon in Adra. Right, when Sun is in Adra, the person can find oneself building a career in research and would have the capability to be a lead researcher. The person may inspire others with one's opinions. The person might say that I have done my research, these are my findings, and I am concluding this happens because of that and others follow the person's lead. The person may have an unconventional, unpleasant, untrusting relationship with authority figures. The person's own authority and power can also be questioned by others. Now, we like your leadership style, but we are unable to feel that high level of trust we expect from a leader. Sun and Rahu, Adra's planetary ruler, do not share a great relationship, so there's likely to be some mistrust there between the native and authority figures or the other way around. Sun isn't known to handle relationships very well, and when Sun is in this nakshatra, the person's style of speaking can burn relations. The person may say things so pinpointedly, so directly and with authority that the other person might feel that, okay, now that you've said this, I don't think we can have a partnership. But the person would always be ready to take one for the team. Okay, this is difficult. I am the leader. I would take responsibility. We've done this thing wrong in this research. This has costed us so much money. I'm ready to take the responsibility and that's an aspect of the native which would be very loved in my view. When Venus is in Adra, the person is likely to be an explorer in one's personal life. The person may want to explore relationships. The person might be very attracted to people foreign to oneself. Unlike in Mekashira, where the person is exploring relationships in search for that one person perfect for that person. In Adra, the person is desiring to know more about different cultures and how different cultures express love. The person can also be a researcher in the field of art, music, fashion, design, like someone who might be very interested in how design of a mobile phone, for example, has changed over the years. The person can also be a researcher in, in the finance industry, particularly if Venus is linked to one of your career-related houses. Venus is a pleasure-seeking planet and this nakshatra has a darker side. So in my view, the native is likely to misunderstand the happiness one can get from material possessions or from love affairs. The person may feel that I was expecting that I'll be happy once I achieve this, make this much money, buy that, or be in a relationship with that person. But later I've realized this was all wrong. 
I was deluded. And that delusion largely is due to Rahu. So here the person can start building castles in the air. The person might be very expressive in expressing one's love, but then may realize, no, what I imagined and what I'm getting is different. This Tamasic energy and Venus's energy can lead to such circumstances. The person is going to be in love with different cultures and different languages. The person may also be very keen to learn about different sciences linked to natural disasters in particular. That's my view of Venus in Ardra. Right, when Saturn is in Ardra, the person is going to be a researcher and a relentless one. This nakshatra has the power of perseverance and Saturn is known to be the most persistent planet. Like we hear stories that this research took this group of scientists seven years. That is Saturn in Ardra. Earlier I had given you two examples of individuals who have Saturn in Ardra, Jonas Salk and Nikola Tesla. The native would be an expert, a master in one's field of work. If you have Saturn in Ardra and you've chosen a path, if you stay with that path for a long time, you'll end up doing things never done before. Given the mastery you'll achieve over the, your topic of research. Research would be very futuristic. Saturn is known to create delays, hardships, in our life and this nakshatra is known for life altering circumstances so it might translate to you were going through Saturn's Antadasha and you were expecting a certain thing to happen like you applied for a visa and you were expecting that I'll be joining that company once my visa is approved but suddenly that was rejected and there is now a delay in your travel plans, in your work plans. And that changes your life significantly. That you had made your plans, you can no longer join the company, now your career has to suffer. So here the suffering linked to Ardra can be linked to delays in particular. Saturn is the slowest moving planet. So if you have Saturn in Ardha, you must look into the Antadash of Saturn. When is it coming? And at that time, you might experience a life-altering event which might be due to some delay that has happened in what you were expecting to happen. A Saturn Ardha-like person can be an expert in conducting one's research with minimum resources like having no funds, but the scientist discovered something which hasn't been done before. So Saturn Ardra like native is the one to look out for. That person has the capability to achieve something extraordinary. Saturn and Rahu incidentally also share a very friendly relationship. And that makes Saturn Ardra a very strong position See, this nakshatra is a lot about exploration and being in the wild. However, Saturn is about following tradition. So it might be that whilst the person is living a life full of freedom, the person is still following a certain tradition, a certain discipline. The life is unique and eccentric, but still very traditional. The person has kept one's traditions alive. Saturn has a tamasic side and so is this nakshatra. So the person could have the tendency to be very antisocial. The person has a pinpointed approach. That is the goal. I have to keep making progress every day. And to achieve that, I cannot have contact with the outside world. The person therefore can also fall prey to addictions. And that is the side of Saturn Atra the native would need to overcome. When Jupiter is in Ardra, this is a combination belonging to a researcher. It really doesn't matter which houses Jupiter is ruling in your chart or where is it placed. If you have Jupiter in Ardra, I think you are an explorer of some kind. 
what kind that would be determined by Rahu's position. Here the suffering and the life-altering events linked to Ardra can be linked to one's education. That the person was going through a study program, everything was fine, suddenly something happened and that affected the person's study plans. Or a certain teacher appeared in your life and that person changed your perspective on life. Or through your own knowledge and research, you have changed people's way of thinking. You have transformed their way of thinking. You have destroyed their delusions. You have removed misconceptions. You've destroyed misinformation. I think Jupiter Adra like person has the capacity to achieve all of this. You can be on the receiving side, as someone who came into your life has helped you see things the right way, or you transform people's thinking by helping them see that what they thought was right wasn't right. This process, however, in my view, is likely to take time. The person may initially start off believing in ideas which aren't as they perceive to be with the passage of time and through one's research the person has the capability to accomplish one's mission in terms of education. The person can also be very knowledgeable about different languages. The person can be very interested in natural disasters and the reasons behind them. The person can be very fond of the wildlife and can also be very fond of travel. Jupiter is known for generosity and this nakshatra is known for self-sacrificing. So together I think the native would be very loved. And lastly, the native is going to have plenty of opportunity in this creation to learn about different sciences. So from an education point of view, the person would always run into the right person or the right institute, the right teacher who guides the person to learn about different things. This is a combination belonging to someone who has a master's in many different areas or they do a PhD after PhD. The curiosity to learn is going to be very, very strong. That's my view of Jupiter in Adra. When Mercury is in Adra, your curiosity to learn is going to be very strong. This may translate to you learning different languages or wanting to learn about different cultures, different sciences, the wildlife. You might be very fond of reading books on pain and suffering. You might want to learn about different wars, their history or the weaponry that's used. Everything to do with destruction, everything to do with natural disasters, the different cultures, the wildlife. Your curiosity is going to be never ending. Your life is going to be dull and you'll feel depressed if you don't feed this curiosity. So you must take up a hobby if you can't afford to learn a new language through a tutor. You can download one of those mobile apps and learn about Spanish, for example, if you're very familiar with English. The native's style of conversation can be very pinpointed, very analytical, very logical, but is likely to be misunderstood by others. I think the person might clearly state how they are feeling, like I've read this and I know it as a fact that this happens for this reason and what you are saying is wrong, rather than saying that Perhaps your understanding is wrong and a better way of seeing things is like that. So that diplomacy might be missing in the person's way of expressing themselves. Mercury in Atra, this nakshatra has the nature of dictionary, which translates to sharp and pointed. So the arguments are going to be similar. The person can translate one of their areas of interest into a business, like starting a language school. Mercury belongs to the caste of a merchant. The curiosity to learn 
is all right, but the native, in my view, would not follow through with one's interests. It might be the case that the person has started learning many different things at one time, but is not known to be an expert in any one of them. Mercury is known for fickleness. Even though this nakshatra has a power of perseverance, the person may not utilize that power. And it's also likely that given the bits and pieces of information the person has learned about different things, the person hasn't fully understood those things and therefore the native may have opinions which aren't true. This tamasic energy which the native might later realize, oh when I said that five years ago I have now realized with life experience and with more knowledge that that was untrue. So it might be the case that a Mercury ardor like person is making arguments which are unthoughtful. The person might feel I'm making an argument which is fully logical, but with time, the person may realize that those arguments were incorrect. And that is the thermosic energy linked to Mercury and ardor the native would have to control. The person is likely to have business relations with foreigners if Mercury is linked to those houses. And lastly, the person is likely to be an excellent salesperson. I think there's not going to be a shortage of ideas and no shortage of unique, creative, innovative ideas. And the person is likely to make an excellent salesperson, marketing professional, etc. That's my view. When Mars is in Ardra, the person becomes a very relentless researcher. This single-mindedness, pinpointed and focused approach is known to be linked to Mars, which is linked to Ardra. So the person can be an expert in achieving one's purpose, one's mission behind one's exploration. Like on a battlefield, you give the soldier, this has to be done. The person does that perfectly. Having said that, the person is very likely to go to the extreme for many reasons. Firstly, this nakshatra has a tamasic energy. Secondly, Mars and Rahu do not share a great relationship. So in pursuit of one's mission, the person is going to go to the extreme and that is likely to be seen in the person's behavior. The person may make strong arguments may get into arguments quickly, things are not going right, the person erupts and starts saying things which are very pinching for the listener. So if Mars is controlling houses related to your emotional side, for example, the fourth house, and you find Mars in Ardra, you'll come across as that person who's very straightforward so straightforward that it's counterproductive. People like to listen to others who are straightforward and honest, but not to the extreme that they say things which can be said more politely. So politeness may be missing in the person's way of doing things. The person is going to be very entrepreneurial, very enterprising, very passionate and driven towards one's research. Mars is a lot to do with warfare and so is this nakshatra so the person may find an interest in learning about different weapons used in wars. Mars signifies all careers in engineering and therefore the person can in this position have a future in electrical engineering or related fields in particular and a Mars-like person is not as thoughtful as let's say a Jupiter-like person. So here the person may instantly decide that I'll sacrifice myself for the team without thinking things through. Perhaps the native is the main member of the team and if the main member decides to give up or sacrifice oneself, then the gesture is going to be counterproductive. So I'm linking Martian energy to the self-sacrificing nature of this nakshatra. The native is likely to learn from life-altering events which make the person stronger that, you know, that happened and thereafter I became much stronger. I told myself I have to be a certain way now. So one's courage 
this determination, this strength, may develop from life-changing circumstances. I'm linking Martian basic energy with Ardra. Mars is not known to give up, and so is this nakshatra. So the person is going to be very dependable once given the responsibility of a project. Mars is known for exploration, and this nakshatra is directly linked to the wildlife. And so that would be seen in the person's way of life. The person is an explorer, both on a mental and on a physical plane. The person is likely to take risks which are unnecessary. And that is the darker side linked to Mars Ardra's position. It can also be in the scientific world where a scientist is discovering something which can be very destructive for the society. Like the discovery of weapons or the atom bomb which uh, naturally has to do with destruction but as a scientist, you look at your achievement of discovery and not what this discovery can lead to. A lot of discoveries that are made by scientists can be used for destructive reasons and a Mars Ardra like person can be behind them. That's my view. When Rahu is in Ardra, the person is likely to stay in the phase of delusion much longer than other planetary positions. Here the person may have ideas which one would realise a few years later. Oh, what was I thinking? That was very wrong. The person's curiosity is never ending. The person, however, at the same time is not willing to give things time. They keep hopping from one area to the other. I wanted to learn Spanish. I wanted to learn about geography, I wanted to travel to that place, I wanted to know about that culture. The person continues one's search for something but is not spending enough time on one thing. I think a Rahu Ardra like person is going to fail to utilize the power of perseverance linked to Ardra. Having said that, such experiences are likely to lead to the native having very creative, innovative ideas. And therefore, I feel Rahu, Ardra-like person, can be behind creations and inventions which have never been thought before. So a Rahu, Ardra-like person can be an inventor, and that's the positive link to the curiosity and the restlessness linked to Rahu, Ardra's way of life. Rahu, Ardra-like person can be prone to addictions. The native is likely to be very fond of the wildlife and very fond of travel. The person is going to go through dramatic, life-altering, sudden events in life, particularly when the person is going through Rahu's chapter. And that is how you can use astrology to foresee when certain things might happen. If you have Rahu in Ardra, it's Antadasha, let's say, is coming up in June 2025, then you can expect something which might feel painful at the beginning is going to happen. Perhaps on the other side, it'll leave you very strong, but whilst you are going through it, you'll feel that what you were expecting hasn't happened and you feel devastated by that. The good news, however, is that you always would know when the Antadasha or any Dasha is going to come to an end. And so you can then have that ray of hope, even when you're going through a difficult time. If Rahu is in Ardra and it's in your first house, you're going to have a very eccentric personality. Your ideas, your way of thinking is going to be very unique. So you are going to be out and out an outcast, in my view. Rahu is known to be the member of the planetary army and this nakshatra is linked to different wars and so the person may naturally be attracted to different weapons that different armies use and what strategies they follow. When Ketu is in Ardra, the person's exploration is likely to lead to exploration within oneself. So it might be the case that the person is very curious to learn, but the person might feed that curiosity in privacy. 
like locking oneself in a room and learning about natural disasters. What is the reason behind earthquakes? So you have that learning style. A war is going on currently. The person is privately learning about the different weapons armies are using and their strategies. The person can also be very inclined towards learning more about different secret services countries have. K2 is directly linked to espionage and this nakshatra has a lot to do with planning to attack a country which one country feels can destroy their peace. So Ketu Adra can have that inclination. Ketu is known for brutality and cruelty and this nakshatra is linked to destruction. And so the person can also become a student of how information can be extracted from prisoners by means of pressurizing them. Ketu possesses piercing logic and if the native is learning any new science with this position the person would become an expert of some kind. The person might have a natural expertise in one's field of work if Ketu is linked to one's career as Ketu is also linked to past life skills. Ketu is linked to not having a self-identity and this nakshatra has to do with sacrificing oneself. So when Ketu goes in Adra, the person can also entertain the possibility of giving up one's life for achieving something and in the process the person might delude oneself into thinking they are doing something for a higher purpose. This nakshatra has a tamasic energy and Ketu also has a tamasic energy. So together this can be a very difficult position. It can also lead to the person deciding to isolate oneself from the society in pursuit of a higher purpose. So difficult energy, Ketu in Adra, the person would seek guidance in life. And so if you have Ketu in Adra, be more thoughtful about your endeavours and search guidance in life. Misguidance can be uh, the greatest misfortune of your life if you have Ketu in Adra. Well, this is it. This is my view on the Nakshatra of Adra. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post a comment. And if you'd like to stay in touch, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.